Hello and good evening to everyone, especially our friends in India. And good morning, good and good afternoon, and a late good evening to friends in other time zones. My name is Rana Patap Singh, and welcome to last webinar on 5S principles. Uh, before we start, uh, last in the last webinar, that last Thursday, we talked about visual management. If you want to view the recording of that webinar, you can go. You can visit our website at lastweb.org and go to the webinar link. Uh, let's talk about the ground rules first. Uh, uh, so we'll start with in the introduction of the presenter, which is me. Uh, as I said, my name is Rana, and uh, I am the executive vice president of Lean and Six Sigma International Board, which is LASIB. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that should be it. Uh, the, the total duration is of 45 minutes, uh, in which the presentation duration will be for 30 minutes, and there will be 50 minutes of question and answer session. Uh, if you have any queries at any point of time, please feel free to use the webinar chat box of GoToMeeting and post your uh, queries over there. And we'll take it up after the webinar is done, that is after 30 minutes of time. Uh, the video of this webinar is also available at the link that you can see here. And you can also, uh, for our professional members, uh, they have, uh, they can also download the webinar for their, uh, for reference later on. And in any problem, if you have any query, any questions, you can always contact Mr. Varun Khare. Uh, he can be reached at contact at lastpratwatch, and you can see his mobile number here. Moving on, we start with about LASIB, uh, what, when, and why. LASIB, Linux 6 International Board. It's a non-profit society and it's in the area of Lean Six Sigma and business excellence and organization excellence. Uh, when we say business excellence and organization excellence, uh, both are separate terms uh, in the sense that uh, when you say business excellence, it could be, the motive could be for profit, but when you say organization excellence, it could be, the motive could be for both for, for profit and not for profit, right? It was conceptualized in 2009 and came into existence in 2010 and was registered in 2011. Why we are here, uh, we know that Lean and Six Sigma concepts, which, you know, delivers on organization excellence, are here to stay, primarily because uh, uh, they are one tool which have been there in the uh, past uh, for a long time now, and they have been able to deliver value to uh, organizations and to their customers for a long time now, right? And uh, we are here to spread the awareness of Lean Six Sigma concepts and share learning to the community at large. Uh, this is the way we have spread over the past two years. Uh, we touched lives of over 10,000 professionals from 40 plus countries. You can see the, uh, the the places that we have been or the places that we have reached in the past two years. Moving on, uh, we start with today's topic, which is 5S. Now, uh, I'm sure that a lot many of you might have heard about 5S. If you have not, don't worry. Uh, because that's why we are here. So, you know, some of you might have heard about the Japanese five words, you know, Siri, Sit Down, Siso, Sit, 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 I always tell anyone who can tell it as quickly as possible, it's a free lunch from my side, always, right? If you translate the five words, which I just, just said in Japanese to English, it becomes uh, uh, sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and then sustain. But what is this five words? What is meant by five? So yes, you have the five words, uh, five uh, verbs you can say, you know, you can use to uh, bring improvement in your area, bring so, 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 and lot many things. But how does it work? Is it really that important? Is it, does it really work? Let's see. Okay, let's go back. So that, that's what we, we, we will be talking about in this webinar today, right, on 5S. And uh, more importantly, what we'll try and focus on is how you can use 5S and you know, go back from this webinar, learn more about it. We're also talking about a research report which we have done on 5S and uh, uh, that can talk about, that research report talks about what uh, are the benefits which an organization can gain by using 5S. Okay, let's take an example. Let's start with an example. In the next screen which I'm going to show, you have to find the number 10. Okay, you will have 10 seconds. Anyone who finds the number can put it on the chart. You know, say hi or say something like, I have found the number. Okay, 
uh, the time it starts now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Any luck? Anyone? Right. I can see the number here, 10. This is, this is where the number 10 is. If I ask you to find the number uh, 5, it's here, right there. You know, uh, this talks about, this, this slide will help you to understand that, you know, if you are new to a place, let's say, let's, I mean, we'll talk about, so let's talk about a place we are, you are already familiar with. You know, uh, there's a, uh, some, a saying which is a very much uh, on, on similar lines as Murphy's Law, which says that the, the thing you want most at any point of time is the thing that you're not able to find. Right, let's say you're searching for uh, a paper weight, maybe you're not able to, maybe you will not be able to find it. It happens a lot many times. Now this happens in a place where we are very familiar with, where you know where the things are, where the things are kept. Let's talk about a place where you have, you're new to. How do you find things? How, how do you know where things are kept? Right, let's say you have been to, you are in a, at a new airport. If they don't have signs for it, they don't have signs for that where is, the, where is the chicken counter, where is the entry, where is the exit, how do you know where to move? It becomes difficult, right? 5S in that sense makes it easy. Now some of you might think that it's very similar to what visual management is. It is. It is. Visual management, visual management is also part of 5S, but then it's, 5S is a bit more, uh, uh, much more bigger than vision management. How does this work is something we're going to see today. So, if in this, in this, you know, in this uh, uh, kind of garbage that you see on the screen here, the numbers are scattered. If I ask you to find any number, probably it will be very difficult for you, for you to do. In the next slide. Oops. Okay. Yeah, we have it. Now you can see the difference. Probably you can find a pattern here. You know, we start with nine here. We have the one, two, three numbers. You can you know, a very ordered way if I ask you to find any number, you can easily do it. If I say 50, you can you know that the number 50 is here. What was the difference, the basic difference between uh, the uh, this this uh, slide and the last slide? Right? You know, uh, okay. So, the basic difference was in order, the order of the things. Right? And that's the first step towards uh, 5S, which is known as sorting. Okay, we come to that. First, let's talk about benefits of an organized and clean, clean environment. Uh, we have, you can see the five five different areas there: time management, safety, quality, customer satisfaction, visual control. Uh, not as, uh, they some of them are linked to each other. Some of them might not be. Uh, but the idea here is that if you have 5S in a place, you will have better safety. Why? Because you know. You know, if, if there is a very good 5S at your place, with the eyes closed, you can easily move around. You know exactly where things are kept. And you know exactly how things would be kept if you want something. Right? Safety is all about reducing the chance of near misses. And if you have an organized workplace, you reduce the chance of near miss. That's safety for you. If you have 5S implemented in your workshop, in your area, Let's talk about the kitchen. You know, you do not go to your workplace. Let's work on the kitchen. If you know exactly which, uh, where do you, uh, where the, the the salt is kept. If you know exactly where the vegetables are. If you know exactly where uh, the utensils are. Or certain type of utensil is located. It's become very easy easy for you to cook the food. Right. Otherwise, you know, the by the time you probably you are uh, looking for the teapot. The water has already boiled in. Now probably the, by the time you uh, have put the water and tea to and kept it for boiling, by the time you look for sugar, maybe it has completely boiled off. You know, it has completely uh, uh, vaporized, right? So that's how 5S will help you. Customer satisfaction is definitely if you have the things. If you if you uh, if you ha if you have an organized workplace, yes. But okay, I, I have been saying organized workplace uh, a few number of times. Does it mean that 5S helps you to have an organized and clean environment. Yes, it does, but it does something more than that. It is something we'll come across later on, right? 
you have customer satisfaction because because you have you deliver that kind of work. Customer satisfaction is nothing but delivering on customers' requirement. If you have the right quality, you deliver uh, right on customers' requirement, and therefore the customer is satisfied. Because of 5S, you also have visual control in your area, which helps you to have better time management. Right? Visual control is also part of visual management, which you have seen last week in our webinar on visual management. But yes, visual management, if you again look at it, look at it as part of 5S. 5S, if you look at it, is part of, part of lean tools, right? Uh, what 5S is not? It is not a, a one-time event, and it is not voluntary. You know, this is where a uh, lot of new organizations have failed in the past uh, while implementing 5S. They have realized that, uh, you know, uh, at some point in time, they realize that you do one 5S at one point of time, once and you are done. You no, know, it doesn't work that way. It's a habit. Right, it's a culture, it's a, it's a mindset, and it's and therefore it's not a one-time event. It's very similar to what uh, you do to maintain your uh, health or maintain your physical shape. Right, you do work in, work out, uh, you take care of your diet all the time. You take care of your health. That's what five is all about. Right, it's not a one-time event. You have to do it again and again. You have to standardize it so that everyone else in the organization is able to. Uh, gain from it and is able to work on it, right? And it's, it's not voluntary, right? Uh, I mean, if you want to go for home-wide 5S implementation, or if you want to go for organization-wide 5S, 5S implementation, uh, you cannot say that, okay, you know, you, 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 and you be a part of this event. Or you can just, you cannot ask for a voluntary involvement in 5S. It has to be mandatory, right? If you want to start with 5S, Make sure that you have the buy-in from everyone in the organization, at least for, from the top management, and then you start to build up the 5S environment, show the benefits, show the savings, involve everyone else. Right? It has to be uh, instructed, yes, yes, there might be a bit of dictatorship in, in initially, but that's what is better for the whole of the organization. So please don't uh, treat, treat, treat it as a voluntary uh, assignment, right? It has to be compulsory at some level. Uh, what is 5S and what? why do you want to do it? So 5S, as mentioned before, in short, it is uh, the first S stands for sorting. Uh, so what is sorting? Sorting is all about getting, you know, uh, keeping things you would need and throwing out things you don't need. As simple as that, that is sorting. Set in order. Once you have things that you need, you keep them in their designated places. Uh, a brief description of certain order is place for everything and everything in its place. I am sure that most of you might have heard about it before. Uh, all it says is that you designate a place for everything, right? Let's say if you talk about your wardrobe at your home, do you have every haphazard? I mean, uh, the clothes in there, uh, starting from your socks to your underwears to your garments to your shirts and trousers, everything are they kept in a some Logical order, or are they kept, you know, as 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 you please, right? So I'm sure that you know it, it would be it would have some kind of order in them. You know, your shirts that you wear more often would be at the top. The ties that you wear more often would be at the top. Uh, your summer wear would be maybe you know uh, if you feel, if you live in a place where the temperature is less than 10 degrees centigrade for most of the time of the year, probably your summer uh, clothes. Uh, would be somewhere in the bottom shelf. Your winter wear would be on the top, right? That's set in order. Now, what you can also do is that you can kind of uh, define a place, you know, put in uh, some kind of partition in the wardrobe and then define place for this is for shirts, these are for trousers, and so on, right? Shine is, you know, you have the items, you have the things with you which are needed, then you set, in, set them in order and then you start cleaning. That's shining, right? You start cleaning, and then that's what you have done till now. You know, you have done one S, two S, and three S. Now we have to go into four S, which is standardized. How do you standardize? You let everyone know what you are trying to do, so that whatever you have done in your wardrobe, let's talk, let's say we're talking about your your home, whatever you have done, whatever good you have done with your wardrobe, everyone in the family would do it now. That is standardized. And then how do you? And then you ensure that you sustain. 
you know what is the funny thing about 5S? Not many organizations are not able to go beyond 3S. It's very easy to sort, it's very easy to, easy to set an order and then clean it up. Beyond that, you start affecting the culture of the organization and then it becomes a very, very, very tough task. Yes, it's tough. You know, if you look at 5S concept, it's so easy to understand, right? A lot many organizations have failed, right? You know, because if you do not work on standardization, if you do not work on sustenance, 5S is, is something uh, probably uh, something which you have not implemented as yet. Okay, so uh, it's yes, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, it's a lean tool, and uh, five is one of the activities that will help ensure uh, everyone, every company's survival. It doesn't mean that if you're not doing five, is you will fail. No, I don't know. Uh, no one uh, would say that. But more importantly, uh, what uh, you might uh, oh, I want to understand is that 5S given uh, uh, the way, I mean, uh, if you implement 5S in your organization, in your work area or at your home even, you know, it's going to be much, much, much more easier for everyone else uh, to survive, right, or live, right, or have fun for that matter. Okay, moving on, uh, where is it applicable? Okay, you know, we have been talking about your organization, your workplace and your home. Uh, talk about universities, talk about offices, schools, roads, workstations, factory floors, desktops, your laptops. How do you use five in laptops? Interesting question. Think about it. We'll come back to it later on. Kitchens, children's room, your room as well. Out on how do you use? How five S has been used, or any particular, or any one of the S has been used on your laptop? Any guesses from anyone? If you look at your keyboard, which is known as a QT. QWERTY QWERTY keyboard, that's one work of standardization, right? You go anywhere in the world, you will probably see that keyboard over there. So if you have that, if you if you are a good, uh, if you have a good typing speed on a QWERTY keyboard, you go, go anywhere in the world, you will have a typing speed for yourself, right? We are talking about we are talking about kitchen, so we are talking about children's room and your room as well, right? There's no place where five S cannot be implemented. Until until it's an it's an empty room where there's no items which which are which require sorting, right? Okay, so uh, five steps. The first question that you ask, you pick up a you pick up an object, and the first question you ask is, is it needed? If yes, you set an order and you clean the organize, you clean the workspace, you clean the area. Then you go for standardization, and then you make it visual, and then you sustain it. If that object is not needed, then you ask, does it have any value? And if yes, then you move it to a temporary storage, right? You use it in other location or you sell it. And if it, that does not have any value to you, probably it goes into trash right away, right? Uh, you know, 5S, so in, in, on, on a broad level, this is what you can term as uh, 5S. Steps. How do you implement 5S? Look simple. Yes, 5S tool. Uh, 5S as a tool or lean tools, for that matter, are very simple to understand and easy to uh, grasp. But the difficulty lies in implementing them. Okay, we look at some more examples of 5S. Uh, we have before 5S and after 5S in a drawer, right? Uh, very easy to find things in the second photograph than in the first one. Okay, uh, some more five examples: uh, clean, organize, and uh, label draw. As you can see, uh, it's very easy to uh, hunt anything. Right? I will talk about an example from my own experience. Uh, so there was a point of a point of time when I used to work in a mining organization uh, in a western part of India, and uh, was in charge of one of the maintenance workshop over there for heavy machineries. And we had a, uh, our own a small store in uh, the uh, a maintenance area where the vehicles to come and they used to get repaired, right? And we had one. So in, in the store, uh, initially when uh, I was, uh, I mean when I first joined that organization, I could see that you know it had to not have any. Uh, I know you can, you can say that it was a before bias photograph which you can see on the slide, right? All we did was you know kind of change it 
you know, have we had a discussion on how we can organize it better. Uh, no one said that we are with wedding privacy, right? So we started with making it a bit organized, which, which uh, we started with uh, uh, kind of putting in labels for various items, various storage areas, and then we had after after you know uh, some uh, effort, we had the second picture in the slide that you can see. What are the benefits? I could, you know, uh, from the time history that we conducted, post uh, uh, the 5S activity, activity that we did and when we compared it with the pre-5S activity, we can see that there was a half an hour difference, difference between, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the time that was, uh, so, you know, uh, after the 5S was done, hunting for, for an object used to, used to take 30 minutes less of time. In short, uh, after the five was, after five was, was implemented, we used to take like two three minutes to uh, find an object. Before that, it used to take at least half an hour to look for an object in that mess. Right, that's a kind of you know, and half an hour of a uh, breakdown in a mining equipment is like too much. You know, you could lose you know uh, uh, some millions and and millions of rupees or dollars in a month, right? So that's the kind of effect we're talking about for five years. Uh, one more example here is the sort and set an order, uh, right? Uh, all unneeded supplies are removed from the area and then they're uh, placed at, uh, place for everything and everything is placed. It, this is what I can, you know, I can say that uh, our workplace looked like before and after in the example that I was talking about. Okay. What does set an order mean? Set an order means that we arrange items so that they're easy to find and also easy to put away. It, it also means that it, it improves your operational efficiency, right? You designate a place for everything. That's it. That's it in order, right? In in, in other uh, uh, in other words, uh, it's a place for everything. A certain order means place for everything and everything in its place. Okay. Moving on, uh, one more example of uh, better home. You can see three. Uh, different photographs here uh, of five S, right? Looks very cute. So, coming to the third pillar, which is shine. Shine means, and it's shine as as you know, it means cleaning, right? It means sweeping the floor, lifting off machinery, making sure that everything in the factory, factory or the workplace or your home stays clean, right? You know, a uh, one important thing uh, or one important uh, advantage or benefit of shine activity is that it helps to bring out defects in your work area. It helps to bring out uh, the defects in your uh, home or in your place. As simple as that, let's say if you don't clean your car, if you have a car, if you don't clean, clean your car on a regular basis or regular intervals, uh, you will see uh, and if there is any kind of, let's say, uh, rusting has started at some some place in your car. You're not be able to see it simply because the, the the car is not clean, right? That's the whole idea of shining. So it's clear. You first sort things, then set you set them in order, and then you shine and you start the cleaning activity. You're gonna see an example of shine here, uh, where people are cleaning uh, their work area, right? Uh, what does standardization mean? Standardization happens when the first three S are properly implemented and maintained. And it means that uh, racking, paint colors, labeling, operational layouts are designed in a standard fashion. What does it mean? Remember the wardrobe example we, we, we were talking about? Now once you, you have done five S in your wardrobe, uh, I mean you can talk about the way it was done your, in your wardrobe and how you have done it and the same thing gets implemented in other wardrobes at your home. Right, that's that's what is meant by standardization. You help, you enable others to gain from the activity activity that you have done yourself. Right, everything will be in place so everyone will know exactly what they are responsible for, exactly when, where, and how to do it. Right, so you know, at all, now if you if you, if if you take it to a, a bigger a level, let's say a five it has been done in a small workshop in a huge organization and they have multiple units in different locations. So after the 5S has been done in a small location in, in one in one unit, you 
start with five activity in, in, in that unit first, right? You look at what else has been done, you get the learning from there and then you take it, spread it across the units at different locations. That's what is standardization. Okay. Moving on, how to implement standardization, right? In a simple sentence, standardization means that anyone should distinguish distinguish normal and abnormal condition at a glance. Just by looking at the way things are kept, anyone should be able to say that, okay, this is not normal or this is abnormal or this is normal. That's the kind of standardization you should be looking for. You know, if you are very particular about the way clothes are kept in your wardrobe, if someone has uh, has had access to it, let me say, and had shifted some of and has shifted some of the clothes from here to there, the moment you open your wardrobe, you would know, right? That's the kind of standardization we're talking about. And the same thing, uh, you know, the same same learning from your wardrobe goes to your workplace, right? We have been talking about so much about 5S. You know, at the end, we are going to talk about what is the actual benefit that you get from 5S, right? It's something not at, yes, there is something at personal level, but there's also something at the whole organization level. Okay? Just maintaining the correct procedures. It's not just about procedures, right? It's making 5S and habit, making the first 4S and habit. A habit for everyone who, for everyone in, 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 in the organization. Uh, and uh, it is again as mentioned before it's not voluntary so we have to involve everyone, everyone in the organization if you want to go if you want to have a better sustenance of 5s activity or the the four is activity you add sustain to it it becomes 5s there's one more uh, s which has been added lately uh, to the 5s it is on a safety they are making 6s right any guess on uh, where does safety fit in in the 5S, it comes after shine, right? You sort things, set them in order, then you shine, and then in the fourth S is the safety, you take care of the safety aspect. So sustenance is nothing but how do you ensure that over a period of time, the first four S are taken care of, okay? When the 5S happen, it happens all the time, right? All the time. 5S is the mindset and a culture. You know, uh, they say that the biggest enemy towards 5S implementation. Any guesses? What is it? The biggest enemy towards 5S implementation is a flat surface. Now think about it. The moment you enter your home, what do you do? You look for a flat surface. You keep a bag, you take out your watch, keep it on the table, you take out your pen, or keep it somewhere else. Right? All the time you're looking for flat surface. Right? It's about changing that mindset. Why not instead of you know? I know it's, okay, it, 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 it's it's uh, kind of also uh, we understand that. And once you're back at home, you're so tired. Probably you don't want to uh, about you know about uh, think about five years anymore. Why not designate a place and keep the things over there? As simple as that. It's a mindset. It's a culture. Right. That's what five years is all about. It happens all the time. Okay. What else? So uh, one thing I'd definitely like to share is that there's a research report that you have on LASIP website, the link you can see over here, uh, which talks about the research report, talks about return on investment after implementation of 5S. Uh, at the, you know, I've kind of put in, in a summary of uh, what has been dis uh, discussed in that uh, research report. The, you know, uh, we have benefit to employee, uh, which talks about safer working areas, lower frustration, increased involvement in daily decisions, uh, improved morale, and less wasted time. And we have for, for the organization, it's much, much, much bigger benefit we can talk about. Uh, we have lower cost, we have improved efficiency, improved quality and standardization, reduced space requirement, reduces the cost of inventory, fewer items, means less storage, space needed, and so many things, right? This actually was a bigger list I had to bring it down so that it's kind of legible to you. Right, you know, you can gain so much by just by simply implementing five years in organization. Don't look for anything else right now. If you want to go for improvement, first start with five years. That that's what uh, should be your goal. Right, you can go for lean. You can go for, you can go for six years, but but that at a later stage, start with five years. 
make it sustainable, you will so very happy with your workplace and your home. Okay. Uh, then the next webinar is on COPIS, uh, which stands for Customer Output Process Input and Supplier. Uh, it's it's a sister of uh, CIPOC, you can say, or CIPOC. Uh, why COPIS was why CIPOC was changed to COPIS is something we'll talk about next week. Uh, it was uh, it, it's on 23rd August at 7:30 p.m. again. That's next week. Uh, for registration, you can contact Mr. Varun Kare at contact at lastyear.org. Uh, thanks for the patient hearing that you have been giving. Uh, any questions, any queries, please feel free to drop it in the chat box, and we can take it up. Right? You can see your example of vision management here in the Q&A session. So we have one question which talks about how 5S can be implemented in service industry. Okay, let's talk about service industry. What would be the example of service industry? You can talk about BPO, you can talk about IT, ITES, you can talk about consulting organizations, you know, you can talk about, let's say you can talk about healthcare, right? How do you implement healthcare in, in, in your system? You know, uh, how do you implement 5S in, in, in the healthcare system? Sorry. Let's think about the operation theater and think about you know, uh, an operation is being held, and it's going on. And doctor is you know is very, uh, you know, he he is, is very constant. He's kind of concentrating on stitching the wound that he has made. I can may I say, no, I do not say that's a wound, but you know, he had made a cut and he's trying to stitch it up, and uh, he's asking for. Uh, a needle, and they're not able to find it. Think about what would happen. First, if the needle is not in in, in the operation theater, they have to go out, sterilize it. Then only they can bring it inside. They cannot use just any needle to kind of uh, uh, stitch the cut, right? That's where fibers comes in into picture, right? But let's talk about uh, a simple example of let's talk about you enter into a hospital. How do you know where is the operation theater? How do you know which is the emergency ward? How do you know where is the ICU? How do you know where is the washroom? They are all examples of IVS, all examples of vision management. right? Now, a doctor who practices IVS or the management of the hospital who practices IVS, they it is for them to enable each and every nurse, each and every uh, person who is working in the hospital to uh, learn about fibers and use it in their daily work area. Right? That's you know kind of a small example on how fibers can be implemented in service industry. Okay, the question if it is how fibers can be implemented, that's something you'll have to start from the culture of the organization. How at what stage it is now and therefore where it has to go. Okay. Uh, we have one more question. Uh, sustained stage seems to be the most difficult. How can you make the stage much more easy to implement? Think about it yourself. You know, uh, what makes you think that you have to go to go for a workout every day in the evening at six o'clock? If you can answer that question, probably you can answer how can you bring make make how can you bring in sustenance in your organization? You know, because in the both in both the questions you are affecting the mindset, you're affecting the culture of the organization. So if you can answer that question, you can also have answer. How can we make uh, make it easier uh, for the sustain for the sustain s to be sustained, right? Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, any 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 more questions from anyone? Uh, I don't see. Uh, thanks for your interest in LASIP and our webinar. Uh, please. Visit us at, at our Facebook page and also you can follow us on our Twitter page for regular updates on our webinar and other events. Uh, for example, we are going to have a world record event uh, and next month in one place in India. Uh, so you know, for such events, be in touch with us. Uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And if you have any questions, any queries, please feel free to uh, you know drop us a note. Uh, we'll be mutually uh, adding more value as as you go forward, right? Thanks a lot to all of you, and uh, uh, yeah, we have one one thanks from one of the attendee. Thanks a lot to you as well for the patient hearing. If you have any questions, 
Do you, uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, we can wait for five more minutes before we uh, stop the webinar. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot again for your time. Uh, have a great day and have a good night uh, based on which time zone you are in and hope to see you next week. Probably I might not be there next week to present, but anyways, anyways, we'll happy to have you back here. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye.